Hello and welcome to Carol's Kitchen. I am Carol with the Gibsonburg branch of the Bertrude Public Library. You might be wondering why am I wearing this sleigh? Um, I am wishing I were in a place like Hawaii, but tonight from the kitchen we are going to make tropical pie, um, which is helping us think of those warmer places even though we're cooler outside in Ohio. Um, but in any case, Tropical pie is a recipe that was uh, passed down to me from my mother-in-law. Um, it's from Pauline Tate's Tea Room in Troy, Ohio, um, and it was served for years and years there uh, as a local shop, much like our ideal bakery here in Gibsonburg was a favorite. Um, that was a favorite place for the locals in Troy, Ohio. But um, this recipe is a very good one if you're looking for something different, something refreshing. Um, I actually had a piece for breakfast this morning, um, but I will get started here and uh, show you how to make it. So um, first thing, if you want to go super easy peasy, which is great when you're busy, you can uh, just buy a pre-made crust, take it out of the freezer, pop it in the oven and follow the directions and uh, you're good to go. You do want your crust to be baked and uh, cooled before we do anything with it for tropical pie. Um, on the Gibsonburg Library's Facebook page for 24 hours, there will also be a link to a keto-friendly crust recipe um, that has virtually no sugar in it at all. Um, and that is actually the recipe that I made um, for our Epiphany Christmas and that I had for breakfast this morning. So check that out if that's something that you are interested in. Um, so once you've got your baked and cooled crust, uh, the next step will be to um, get a can, 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. Grab some cornstarch and just regular sugar. Um, or you can use a, a monk fruit sweetener is something we like in our house. Um, for my low sugar, uh, keto friendly crust uh, version of this recipe, I didn't use any sugar at all. Um, it, the fruit itself, um, there's both pineapple and bananas in it, was sweet enough for my taste. Um, if you like something a little sweeter though, I definitely encourage you to, to include the sugar in that. So, we need, as I said, the 20 ounce can of pineapple. I'm just gonna dump that into a saucepan. calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm just gonna mix that all in together. As well as a half a cup of regular sugar, monk fruit alternative, or again, just no sugar at all if you just wanna go um, no added sugar in the recipe. So we'll get that cooking on the stove under lower to medium heat. And you want to stir it around. The whole goal here is for the, uh, the ingredients to blend together and for that moisture to cook out of that pineapple filling. Those of you who cook a lot know that cornstarch is our thickener. So we'll let that um, start to, to cook and to thicken. And I just realized I need to show you what this dessert looks like. So this is tropical pie. And that's what we're making tonight. So while that is thickening and cooking, um, and that is a step you want to do a little bit in advance because it does need to cool and it took at least an hour, actually a little bit more um, for it to do that. So you might bake your crust and make your pineapple uh, mixture all at the same time. Um, perhaps even on a different day if you're really busy or preparing it ahead. Um, but so, okay, so we've got our baked crust. Let's assume that's already done. The next step is gonna be to take two bananas and slice them into your crust. I know some people are not big banana fans, but in this recipe you might enjoy it. 
And we are just going to cover that whole crust with sliced bananas. And uh, I did make the tropical pie uh, for our, as I said, our Epiphany Christmas. And I did that on Saturday and we enjoyed it on Sunday. And I used very ripe bananas. And um, they still look great. They looked great for breakfast this morning and they still tasted great. So ripe bananas will work really well. And I guess if you're like, um, a lot of the people in our cookbook club, you don't like anything to go to waste. So regardless of um, what your bananas look like, you'll use them, right? And when I was talking about our cookbook club, that is a program the library offered on a monthly basis. Everything is on hold with COVID, but um, this is what we're doing as an alternative. So you've got your baked crust lined with your bananas. There's two bananas. Okay, from there, you're going to want to take um, some pecans and ground them up. I've already done that for tonight. And uh, it's called, the recipe calls for one half cup. But um, I have a little bit more here because I happen to really like pecans. And I, I did that in the recipe I made on Saturday. And you are just going to pour that over the bananas. And just so you know, there are people in my family who really don't like nuts. And I did not mention that I had pecans in here, and, and they didn't even notice. So um, those pecans are part of what made this um, a great breakfast for me because it will help you uh, feel full longer because there's protein in those pecans along with the refreshing taste of those bananas and the pineapple. So the next step would be to um, add that cooled pineapple mixture. It's heating up over there, but it's going to take a little while for that to be done. So, just to keep it simple tonight, I'm going to show you another pie that I made when I made our low sugar pie. So you can see what that pineapple looks like once it's been cooled. And that's a pie that's already had that on top. This is so simple. The next part is even more simple. You can use whipped cream to top it off. If you really want to go no sugar, there's heavy whipping cream that has zero sugar in it. Um, some of them have a couple. It just depends on the kind you get. Um, but you can use the heavy whipping cream and your blender and just keep beating it until it becomes like whipped cream. And that is a good no sugar alternative if you really want to go that route. Um, or you can use the handy dandy um, whip topping in the can, which is easy and also very fun. And uh, decorate your pie. <laughs> Get creative on what you do with it. Um, and then if you like cherries, you can put cherries on top. Oops. Oh, goodness. And there you have it, tropical pie. If you have any questions about this recipe, feel free to call me at the Gibsonburg Library at 419-637-2173. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next Monday at 7 for another Pauline Tate Tea Shop Room Treat. Have a good night.